Did you know you can make sheet music in Studio One? I did it recently for a session and it was incredibly easy. So if you are into composition, then this isn't really for you. This is for folks like me who occasionally need to maybe print out a part for a proper musician to read the sheet music. You may not know this, but Personas, in addition to creating Studio One, we also create a piece of software called Notion, which is notation software, where you can go in and do full compositions. Well, since we own both companies, we can incorporate a lot of that notation stuff into Studio One for folks like me who maybe don't need the full compositional features, but I do want to be able to do a little bit of sheet music. By the way, if you're a Studio One Plus member, you get Notion for free. So if you want to do composition and recording, that that's like the best deal of the century. Okay, so here is that a song I worked on recently, and I really wanted my my son. He's thirteen. He's in the band. Just made the honor band, and I wanted him to play clarinet on a on a song. And I knew he, he's not the kind who plays by ear, right? He has a sheet of music and he plays the notes on the page, and he does it surprisingly well. Um, not surprisingly well, but he just does it really well. So I realized. Uh, this should be super easy with Studio One. So what did I do? First of all, let me un, uh, enable this track. First thing I did was I pulled in a clarinet sound, which, by the way, I mentioned Studio One Plus before. Studio One Plus, among the many things you get, you get access to this. Let me find it here. It, under Presence, which is our main virtual instrument, you get access to a bunch of really beautiful orchestral stuff, specifically right here. You see this, the PSO Classical Orchestra? This is the Persona Symphonic Orchestra, I believe, and it gives you access to all these different orchestral samples, and they sound incredible. So I pulled that down, downloaded this, because it had a woodwinds section. I found the clarinet, dragged it onto a track, an empty track, and it created this virtual instrument that sounds like this. So I got on my keyboard, I played in the part for him that I wanted him to play. Then it's just a matter of double clicking on it to open up the editor. And when you first open up the editor, it looks like this. It looks like normal MIDI editor. So I came in, I selected all the notes, I pressed Q to quantize them to make sure they're right on the grid, because I'm not gonna keep this MIDI part, right? He's gonna play this part, this is just a placeholder until we have the recording session. But what you might not know, if you open up any MIDI track like this, and you look over here on the top left-hand side of this MIDI editor, there are three different views for this. One is a drum view, which we can get into another day, but the other is the score view. As Soon as I click on that, check it out. I can now see the part for my kid to play on clarinet. So I could, if it just want to make it real easy, I could literally, when we were practicing, I would just put this on the screen. It kind of works like a follow the bouncing ball situation. So you can see it's following along. Literally, if I was new to this and I wasn't great at reading music and I wasn't sure about the timing, this would be really handy. I can literally follow the blue blob through the entire song, which is cool. Or what's probably more helpful for a proper musician is we've added a print button. So I can literally go wha-bam, and it lets me have a PDF that I can print out uh, with all the exact music there. Um, hang on, there's one thing. Ah, okay, and since I don't want it to have just like two pages of empty bars, if you select this single track page layout, it only shows, this is exactly what you expect. As a orchestra member, I like to see that he likes to see that he's resting for 58 measures and then he comes in and just his parts are shown. So then it becomes really easy to make this a single page PDF that I can now print, put it on a music stand and record. And that's all within Studio One. All I never had to click a single note. I played it here. I quantized it. I opened up the MIDI editor. I switched to score view and I printed. You can do that with single note things. If you play out a complex piano part that you want someone else to play or you want to block out chords and then have them have the sheet music and then they can play more elaborate stuff over the top. Uh, that's all available to you. Uh, same with, uh, I would use this for something like that, like a woodwind instrument. If I had a cellist come in and it wasn't the kind of cello player who could just hear a song and you say, it's an E, have fun. If they need some parts, then I would A, make sure I knew that before the recording session. B, I would record some parts using virtual instruments, record some cool cello parts, and then print them out and have him play them. By the way, one of the cool things about the way, uh, at least specifically this um, virtual instrument I was telling you about, the Persona Symphonic Orchestra works, it has limits to what I can play. So when I opened this up 
on the instrument. So on presence, uh, I couldn't play lower than the range of the instrument itself. So you can see this gray bar here. Um, I couldn't go like way up here and play some like flute part and expect him to play it. And I also can't go below that low C note, which is the range of the instrument. I've heard uh, somebody just recently telling me he was playing a violin part for someone who had written it like this and then wanted him to play it. But it turns out they wrote it using a virtual instrument that let them play the violin on any note they wanted. Turns out he play, he wrote a part that would that reached to more notes than that violin could play. So it went lower than the lowest note on the violin and higher than the highest note. So if he had used something like this, he would have known, oh, the violin doesn't go any higher than that. I need to rework either rework what this part's going to be or perhaps use a different instrument. Um, but I'm, I, would, I, would, I would venture a guess. If your song goes out of the range of a violin, the melody's probably a little too broad. Bring it in a little bit. All right, that is it. Uh, this is one of those tips. Unless you do this kind of music all the time, you may find yourself only using this occasionally. But it is so fun and easy. It kind of makes me want to do more music like this because it took me like, four clicks and I had a printout of a sheet of music and I didn't have to learn a new piece of software to do it. That's pretty great. My name is Joe Gilder. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.